What is going on guys? In this video, we're gonna take a first look at Nanai, uh, the app that I've been building and that I'm launching into uh, beta testing. And if you are using a Apple Watch and you're curious uh, about tracking your health and having uh, in this, uh, you have pretty much very similar to Whoop functionality at least. And so if you're curious about this, then join the Discord and uh, I'll invite you to the beta testing. But I just want to go through the app, see what it can do today, talk about the vision of the app um, and the improvements we're making and so on. All right. So, you know, first, for those of you who are using Whoop, I'm also using Whoop <laughs> because I'm curious to see and compare. But um, the um, this is very similar to Whoop functionality. If you have, you know, you have sleep recovery and strain score, you know, uh, what is cool is that since I am building this, uh, there's no, there's not going to be maybe in some cases, but in many cases I can, you know, go through and implement the actual algorithm for it from scratch. So I can, you know, I can give you insight into exactly how we're calculating the sleep score, exactly how we're ca calculating recovery and strain, um, which I'm going to probably do in upcoming videos. But, uh, anyways, basically, it tells you from last night's sleep, you know, how your sleep performance, how recovered you are. And this is using resting heart rate and HRV from your historical data, comparing and seeing how they correspond to today. And strain is a metric of how much you've exercised today, essentially. And now I haven't done anything today, so it's quite low. But anyways, then I have Basically, I have resting heart rate and HRV from morning or manual measurement, which I can do on the watch. So I make a, a three to five minute um, manual measurement. Uh, and then alongside that, I also gather resting heart rate and HRVs during the night from the Apple Watch and display it as well. So right now we're kind of experimenting, you know, are the morning be better than the nighttime measurement? So this is a little bit of an experiment but you can choose, you know, uh, or you can have both. You get some other insights like your sleep duration, you know, average heart rate today, calories burned, uh, total steps, weight, temperature, blood oxygen, respiratory rate, all of these that the watch are tracking. And we get sort of comparison, you know, if this is good or bad, depending on your historical values. Um, uh, similarly, I've also added in sort of air quality, UV index, pressure, and pollen levels for those who are pollen allergic and um, stuff like that. Then I have basically different tabs, very similar to Whoop here, but basically we have, you know, sleep, we can see different stages, we can see restful sleep uh, and sleep consistency as well. Um, we have recovery and here we have, you know, weekly averages plots of resting heart rate from when I started. These are from the morning measurements. So when I started in April, my resting heart rate was 70. I've been able to reduce it. So now it's 66 and it's been as low as yeah, about 60 here. HRV graphs a week from the morning measurements, as well as these uh, nightly nighttime resting heart rates as well. So in the beginning, this is from October 2023, which I, when I started wearing the watch, you can see that it's been pretty stable up until here. And then it went down to 55, 56, and now it's at 60. Similarly for HRV, you can see a big improvement sort of for me. It was pretty stable here around pretty, pretty bad numbers actually, or like 35 maybe average here. And then it's increased uh, when I started tracking my diet, exercising better, um, yeah, I'm going to, you know, to understand really what HRV resting heart rate, I think I'm assuming here, basically, you have an idea of this because this is who I'm catering to, you know. Uh, but if not, basically, HRV measures your resilience, your adaptability to stress, resting heart rate, obviously, just how low your beats are and lower is better in most cases and studies looking at all cause mortality and, and so on. Strain, we're still kind of working on a little bit, but basically, you have calories burned, you have average heart rate. Uh, which is basically if you uh, the strain increases depending on the heart rate zone that you're in so if you do intervals the strain will increase very quickly if you do zone two cardio it'll increase very slowly but in all honesty you know i added the strain score because whoop has it but to be frank like there's no scientific validity to the strain score 
it basically just says, you know, it's a way for you to compare how hard was this exercise compared to this, and we can make analytics on it, basically summarizing the cardiovascular strain that you've put on your body. All right, so this is the the summary page. You know, it tells you basically all the metrics here. And we're, we're adding new features all the time. So this is just how it is right now. But it's very similar to Whoop, I would say. We also have journal. Basically, you know, uh, basically you can, you know, um, uh, click the ones you, you've done. And we can then do gather those, do insights as to when you do magnesium and or perhaps you read before bed then your sleep performance improves or your recovery the next day is better basically we try to find your habits if you're perhaps you're taking a sleep supplement or you're drinking alcohol some days we can try to track what and how is it impacting you also i've added basically a um, a chat this is different from whoop obviously this is a pretty new feature i've added which is that I've been using chronometer for tracking my diet. I didn't like how strict I had to be in my life. So I tried to relax the constraints and basically, can we, you know, like, can we uh, use, you know, uh, visual language models to basically analyze my meal? Sorry, that wasn't meant to be in caps, but basically if we can, um, put in an image, send it to, to, you know, a vision language model, ask it to analyze it and basically break it down. You know, yeah, I think this is lettuce, grilled chicken, croutons, bacon, Parmesan cheese, Caesar dressing. And then you can have like a discussion with it. You know, like I think the bacon is wrong. It should be maybe a bit more like 50 grams, etc. And you can have like a conversation. You can say like, yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, sounds good. Uh, store it for today. And then it'll basically take that, which you gave it, and it'll put it into the diet tab. And um, let us see. So, yeah, basically now it'll be put here. Oh, this is actually a old version. <laughs> Sorry about that. This diet should not be here. But anyways, it gives you these like energy, protein, carbs, and fat. And uh, you can basically, I'm using it to track uh, my diet because I'm trying to lose weight. And uh, what's cool is that, you know, since we also have calories burned in the actual, yeah, sorry, it updated now because I'm using the simulator and uh, it's not connected to Apple Health. But anyways, you have the calories burned. And then, uh, and uh, you know, an idea I have here is we can combine those two because actually there it is quite accurate when I looked at how my weight has been going uh, compared to the calories that I've been eating um, and the, you know, what the scale says. But so basically we can uh, modify, we can make this adapt adaptable. Um, but yeah, basically this is, uh, this is the current version of the app. All right. That's it for this video, guys. See you in the next one.